Andorra was spectacular. What? Huge backflip! But now, the Vildsi loader is calling. For event number three, the athletes will need to conquer the Austrian giant. Only the top ranked athletes will advance to the finals in Verbier. So, it's crunch time. <laughs> For the third event of this year's Freeride World Tour, we headed to Austria. Located in the Tyrol region, in the heart of the Kitzbühler Alps, Fieberbrunn has a long history of hosting the Freeride World Tour. The venue is the north face of the Wildsee Loader. The start sits at 2,119 metres and extends over 620 metres with a gradient of up to 70%. A warm spell leading up to the competition had quite an impact on the venue. Snow depth wasn't great, so the riders examined it carefully to ensure they could navigate safely. The male snowboarders would be the guinea pigs, discovering which lines were working. In this category, youth has climbed to the top of the podium. Cody Bramwell had done well in Andorra last season, but stepped it up in 2021 and took his victory ahead of Blake Moller at event number one. I'm overwhelmed. I can't believe this is actually happening. Buoyed by his success, Blake Moller went one better in the second event to take his first ever win on the Freeride World Tour. It's pretty insane that it came to life, so I'm super excited. With Bramwell stumbling on a landing and only finishing in eighth, Moller now shares the lead with the Brit. French rider Victor Delarue sits in third. With his place in the finals assured, Cody decided to play it safe in Fieberbro. I was like planning on trying to just put one down because I had a first and the last and I was like, I need to get like a decent score down. So I was like, just stay on your feet, just get down, that's it. And I managed to stay on my feet. It wasn't the cleanest, but I'm happy I just didn't tomahawk or anything. <laughs> Nils Mendnik won both events here in Fieberbrunn in 2020, so on paper, he certainly looks like the favourite. But the low tide conditions this year have created a totally different face with a very different personality. Backside 180? To switch backside 180 up at the top certainly had the judge's pencil scribbling. He then picked up pace into the main chute. Fantastically scientific in his approach to snowboarding. managed to find his way out to the rider's left-hand side and put down a beautiful backside 360. Tom Burt once famously said that good riders can make bad snow look great, and that was certainly the case for Nils Mindnick. He let his experience and technique shine. He's stable, centered, and in control of this run from top to bottom. You cut, you cut off that way, eh? I was thinking about that, I had too much speed. I was like, oh, I'm going straight down. Yeah. So a final score of 83. What you got, mate? I got an 80, I think it was an 83. Nice, nice, nice. What nice, did nice. you have? Nice. All right. The snowboard men's season's friggin' stag, dude. Like, everyone's so good. Anyone could and, you know, will win this thing. Um, so I think at Verbier, there's still a lot of room for things to be swapped around, and um, yeah, nobody should be left unaccounted for. Victor Delarue, the 2019 world champion, is one of those riders looking for a good result here. Going from start number two, the opposite start to Nils Mendnik, he headed out to the right-hand side of the face. More shade over here, so a better snow quality, but less accumulation. So lines are harder to come by and you've got to watch out for those sharks. Victor set off on this high line into this lip 
and sent a beautiful 360, way bigger than anything else we'd seen in the category up to this point. He then found himself hooking up a nose above this exposure. It was a quick recovery, though. And he sent this cliff deep into the landing with a very, very solid reception. But he didn't back off as he came through this mogul field and cleared the canyon. Hank Billis had done it the year previously, but snow conditions had been way, way better. He then found himself in these death cookies and debris and Victor Delarue had got a very impressive run under his belt. Honestly, I had so many doubts about this, uh, this gap. Uh, for me, even when I look at it from here, it doesn't look like it works. I told um, Bimbos, who did it first in the Friday World Tour yesterday, he told me, oh, you need to go freaking fast, but he told me, oh, well, okay, okay, but it will work, so I was okay. And this morning, I just asked Cody, who did it last year, and he said, oh, actually, it's pretty mellow. And this gave me a lot of confidence as well. Delarue rediscovered the form that delivered him the world title in 2019, and a 90.67 is an immense score. Tour leader Blake Moller decided to go big with a corked backside 720. Unfortunately, the fall resulted in a low score, which would see him finish in seventh. It was fun, snow was better, but I fell on a little back stab attempt. Yeah, it was fun though, stoked to try it. Had nothing to lose, so might as well. Victor Delarue had a perfect view from the hot seat of his friend Camille Armand dropping into the face, pushing him well, but maybe not too well if he wanted to hold on to that first place. Armand is sat on a fifth and seventh from Andorra, so he needed something special here if he wanted to advance to the finals in Verbier. But the Chamonix loves the bigger, steeper faces, so this event played to his strengths. He headed out to the rider's right and attacked the same setup as Victor Delarue with a 360. But without the grab, it was a little looser. The landing was perfect, though, and to celebrate, he arced out a couple of the most beautiful turns the tour has seen so far this winter. It fed him onto the top of this drop, and despite that hard landing, he absolutely greased it. He then very nearly overcooked the run on the last hit. But he did make it through this 360. And cling on to the finish. So Camille Armand in desperate need of a solid result. There's that 360 up top, very solid landing, and you can see fluidity, line, and air and style are high. There's that solid landing that he managed to punch through. And here's the 360 that nearly caught him out. Luckily, stayed on his feet. Much to the delight of his friend, Victor Delarue. 85.67, good enough for second. Very happy, happy about my run. For me, second or one is perfect for today, so I finished uh, second, so what else? <laughs> so last year's champion, Nils Mindnick, finished in third. Cody Bramwell just missed out on the podium in fourth. But the 2019 Tour champion, Victor De La Roque, takes his first win of the season. Uh, I'm super damn stoked to take another victory here. I had it like two years ago. And this year I was really riding pretty bad, like the first two stops. So, And this one I was just like, okay, I'm not even sure if my line will work, but I just try, we'll see. And it worked out and I got the win. And so it's really giving me a lot of energy for all the rest of the season. In the overall, Blake Moller holds on to the top spot with Delarue moving ahead of Bramwell into second. Camille Armand's result means he leapfrogs Michael Morn to take the last qualifying spot for the final in Verbier. With three different winners from each event and no consistency beneath them, the men's snowboard category is still wide open. Up next is the ski category. This time, the men will go first. But before we get started, let's have a quick look at where we stand. Rocky. 
Not for the first time in the men's ski category, a rookie took the win in the first event of the season. With a huge 360 and a backflip, Ross Tester took the win in his Freeride World Tour debut event. But in event number two, he stepped things up with a flat spin backflip, but couldn't stomp it this time. Andrew Pollard saw his chance and grabbed it with both hands, banking one of the fastest runs of the day. And this huge drop at the end guaranteed the American the win. I actually didn't think I could win one of these comps anymore with how good the kids and hell, even the old guys are skiing like Reyna. Like, it's such a cool group of people, so to win, it's pretty much the biggest honor I've ever had. Pollard sits second in the rankings ahead of veteran Rene Barkrin. But on top, it's a rookie. Mayel Olivier had a great debut on the Freeride World Tour. A second and a fourth place finish makes him the top contender for this year's title, if he can keep up the consistency. Hey, now I recognize you. <laughs> Thank you. I hope so. A snowboarder made a lot of bomb holes in my landing, so we'll see. <laughs> well, it shouldn't be an issue for the mayor of Stomptown. Rene Barkrid's had so many different phases to his career, but it feels like this year he's found yet another gear. Tapping into the enthusiasm and stoke of the rookies on tour, he's been committing to some huge lines, which coupled with his experience has been paying big dividends. He headed straight to the Eagle shoe. This is the big mountain showpiece and sent that huge cliff at Mach 10. After a brief respite as he made his way through the middle of the face, he then doubled down again with a drop that in the absence of rocks to gauge the size of the features was at first difficult to measure. But as you can see now, it was absolutely massive and somehow he held on to the landing. Great snow at the top, got my line exactly the way I wanted it. Come down to the middle, snow got a little tricky, but uh, better than expected actually. At the very end, I had a medium sized air into some snow that was extremely challenging and it was just hold on for dear life and make it to the finish line. Uh, overall, pretty fun. Despite that final scare, he made it to the finish area with one of the most electrifying runs of 2021 under his belt. Next, it was the turn of Ross Tester, the man with the freestyle skills of an X Games contender and the edge control of an Alpine racer. Ross Tester is built for the Freeride World Tour, as he proved in Andorra, taking a win at his first ever event at the elite level. It's a legitimate question to ask of a rookie, but can he step up to a big mountain face? The answer, a resounding yes, when he launched this huge backflip into the chute on the right-hand side of the face. A couple of very playful turns and jumps. And then he made his way down onto the exit cliff. Tao Kryback had had a go at this one and failed. Could Ross Tester make it work? Yes, he could. A huge left side 360 into Tao Kryback's bomb hole. Let's go. I did not expect to put that one down. Rene and Ross had landed two very different runs, but how would they compare? When I was sitting up there, I was going through all the different things I could have done. I came to the decision to do a backy and a three, and I knew I had those locked down, so put it together. Tester betters Barcrib by just one point, and the mayor of Stomptown has to vacate the hot seat. Usually the model of consistency, Christopher Turdell was under pressure here to stick a run and get a solid position to ensure he would advance to Verbier. So the question was, would he throttle back and aim to guarantee a finish in the middle of the pack, or would he give it his all? He dropped straight into the eagle and followed compatriot Rene Barkrid's double line with a grace that belied the blistering speed he'd picked up. But refusing to check that speed, he blasted through one pinch and then just managed to hold on through the mogul field of an in-run. 
that spat him out and over the canyon. He may have lacked the composure that Victor De La Rue showcased earlier, but he'd managed to join together the most critical zones on the face. A phenomenal descent from Christopher Turdell. I knew I was going to have to carry a lot of speed to clear the canyon, uh, and I also knew about the little bump for the kick. Uh, so I tried to swallow the bump, but my, I had too, too much speed, so I just almost uh, flew over the bump and then into the kicker and bounced off over the canyon. Yeah. I don't know how it looked, but I'm glad I landed on my feet. So an emphatic descent that was going for the win. Would the judges agree? Okay. No, 87 points, enough for third, just behind Reyna. Oh, I'm happy to be down here. There's some heavy hitters coming in. We got Mael, the current leader, coming in, and a few other uh, big dogs up there. So crossing my fingers it holds, but pretty much guaranteed podium at this point, so stoked on that. Carl Regner Eriksson, who alongside Turdell and Rene Barkred, is part of the Swedish Big Mountain Mafia. They share their opinions and experiences, especially when it comes to lines. And as a result, you'll often see them taking similar routes down the mountain. And on the Vildsee loader, that was definitely the case. Carl heading straight for the Eagle. Not as clean as Rayner and Turdell through there, but he did manage to track across the face and chuck in a 360. Would it be enough? Line and Aaron style absolutely maxed in the judging criteria. That 360, the icing on the cake. Carl waited patiently for his score. An 87 would put him in joint third place with Turdale. I have the same points as Christopher Dell, I think. I mean, that's always, uh, I'm happy with that. <laughs> to have the same points as Christopher Dell, you know you have done something good, so I'm super happy with that. Despite wearing the golden bib, the French rookie, Mayel Olivier, had said that he wasn't feeling the weight of expectation that comes with leading the Freeride World Tour rankings. The proof, however, would be in the way he skied. He took off in the same direction as Testa, Turdell, Barkred, and Karl Regner Eriksson before him. Would he succumb to the temptation of the eagle? He certainly looked like he was turning in, but then that right turn set him up for something completely different. Coming on to one of the most exposed areas of the face, he looked for a double between these rocks. Unfortunately, he leant back Ross Tester would be crowned winner of his second event in 2021. Yeah. <laughs> Came out to have fun and worked out, <laughs> I guess. So Ericsson and Turdell have to share third on the podium. Barkrid takes another second place, but the top step again belongs to the American rookie. Um, it's gonna be interesting. I don't like wearing the um, golden bib because I think it's bad luck. Yeah, I mean, I'm stoked to get on the back and go try that out. I've always wanted to ski it, try and put in some uh, freestyle uh, and good skiing. Um, yeah. In the overall, former tour leader Mayel Olivier drops down to fourth. Turdell jumps up to share the second spot with Rene Barkred and the rookie, Ross Tester, will ride in the golden bib in Verbier. Isaac Freeland did it last year. Can another rookie do the unthinkable this year? The Swedish Big Mountain Mafia will certainly have a say. The ski women will go next. So let's take a look back at Andorra and see what's happened so far. Hedvig Vessel dropped a lot of jaws, pulling off a huge backflip at her first run of the season. It's a kick, and I like that. She took an emphatic win in the absence of last year's overall winner, Ariana Tricomi. But did she take too much confidence into event number two? It went wrong right from the drop-in. Yeah, I'm OK. 
It was quite the opposite for Elizabeth Gerritsen. She started with disappointment in event one, losing a ski for no obvious reason and getting a DNF as a result. But she stayed mentally strong. Going big in event two, chucking a 360 to devastating effect. Honestly, I learned how to do proper threes this year. Super stoked to like pull it out today. She took the win and was back in the game. But it's Juliet Willman who sits atop the rankings. Runner-up twice in Andorra, she is proof that consistency is queen. <laughs> First to start is last year's FIBA Brum winner and overall champion Ariana Tricomi, who decided to skip the first two events in Andorra. For me, I think this was the right winter to kind of take some time off and work on different aspects of skiing, like learning new tricks. And I'm mega happy I spent more time doing backflips because it's something that I wanted to do my whole ski time, but then I ended up doing other stuff. Conditions, unfortunately, didn't look really, really good in Andorra, so that was definitely uh, one reason why I decided to not go. And the other one was that I got the chance to film some projects that I've been actually dreaming about for a longer time in my beautiful Dolomites, so my backyard. And uh, so, yeah, I decided to do that instead. But uh, watching the come from the couch was definitely really hard. I don't have a plan yet about my line because conditions look bad and it's really hard to tell where the good snow is or the good lines. Um, last year for me, I got here and I knew exactly where I wanted to ski. I won. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. At the end, I also won the world title after the win here. So that was a crazy end of the season. This year, this line doesn't work, uh, which makes it yeah, interesting. But since I didn't compete on the first two comps, I'm not really going for the world title this year. I'm just here for the vibes and the family. And uh, maybe you see me next year on the tour again with some more tricks, hopefully. Despite not being a contender for the World Championship in 2021, Ariana Tricomi was still drawing all of the attention because people were desperate to see what she'd been up to and whether she was still sharp when wearing a bib. She dropped in and there was that classic Ariana Tricomi style. Very, very graceful, smooth turns as she headed out to the far right-hand side of the venue. She was drawn like a magnet to the Marcus Eder kicker. And she certainly wasn't shy on her speed over that. She cut up high onto the right-hand side of the face and threaded a double. She then used the hip over some of the shrubbery and headed back to the far right-hand side of the chute. The transition was very, very tight. It kicked herself forward, and we got the uncharacteristic sight of Ariana Tricomi falling. Unfortunately, I kind of crashed, but recovered and skied on. But obviously, that's just not the best point. The snow was very bearable, quite hard to ski actually, and also after the tracks, it was actually quite hard to stay on, on our feet. I'm happy about some, some cliffs that I hit, and uh, yeah, part of the game to crash, and yeah, all good. Next up was the American Tracy Chubb, who managed to get a solid run from top to bottom, which put her in the hot seat. Like Tricomi before her, Elizabeth Gerritsen, winner of the last event in Andorra, also got caught in the tricky snow. For us, there's a bit of a low visibility and very variable snow. And then I landed, I think, in like a, what we call a death cookie. 
and I kind of caught my ski and then I tumbled. Yeah. Next rider. Hedvig Vessel has exploded into the 2021 season. You could see that she was brimming with confidence in Andorra, but a fall in that second event might have dented that confidence. The verdict would be the way she approached this run on the Vildsee loader. Any educated observer would have bet good money that Hedvig would head straight to the Marcus Eder jump that had seen all of the comp's biggest tricks so far, but she didn't. Instead, she followed the fall line into the most exposed zone, and in doing so, the former Olympic mogul skier proved that she is becoming increasingly comfortable in exposed, steep terrain. In her approach to the cliff, she was maybe a little hesitant, but her landing and control were incredibly strong. Skiing carefully at the bottom of the face, she had great strategy that ensured she got a score on the board and would guarantee her a spot in Verbier. I mellowed it down a little bit. I went for one big cliff, but then took it pretty easy everywhere else because it was so difficult with the snow. And I really wanted to land a run. A score of 73.33 would put her in the hot seat and guarantee her that place in the finals. And of course, put her one step closer to the title. Susanna Vitek has had a decent start to her freeride world tour career with a fourth and fifth in Andorra but she was sat in sixth overall in the standings coming into this event, just outside the qualifying spot. So she had to put down a decent performance here to keep her season alive. Having dropped first in both of the Andorra events, she had the benefit of being the seventh skier to drop here. Whether that played a part is anyone's guess, but she looked strong and relaxed from the off. Heading far skiers right, she played with the ridge and the shoot, linking three smaller features with style. She then cut high and to the right, finding an original line. She kept it moving through the steep terrain above a cliff band. She then kept it exposed by doubling back into this area. It's the steep terrain on the left side of the chute, and if she was nervous about the compulsory cliff at the bottom of this terrain, it didn't show. Doubling the exit, she let the skis run. But rather than playing it safe like Hedvig Vessel, she headed straight to the final cliff ban that has a notoriously flat landing. The takeoff needs to be angled just right to catch that little landing there, but she did it with ease. A very, very solid run from the Polish rider who plies her trade in Switzerland. Would it be enough for the lead? 74.67. Zuzana Vitic would take the win. So Ariana Tricomi ended up in fourth ahead of tour leader Juliet Wilman. But it's Zuzana Vitic taking her first ever win on the tour. It's just unreal. It's like truly amazing. I was just dreaming before to, to be at the podium at this once. And to stand on the top spot, it's just crazy. I'm super, super happy and stuck. The top five women are qualified to go to the final. Verbier local Elizabeth Gerritsen just makes the cut, with Norway's Hedvig Vessel moving to the top of the leaderboard again. Uh, for the girls, it's super tight with the, with the title. And now I, I get the Gottman back, which is super cool. Um, but. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a high level in, in the girls this year, so it's going to be it's going to be tight. That's cool. It's cool that it's you need to fight. And that is exactly what the Beck de Ross will demand from the women: a fight. We're approaching the end of the competition, and the final category to drop are the snowboard women. But who can conquer the Vildsee loader? In the women's category, the three-time world champ Marion Haerty continued her dominance in 2021. 
winning both events in Andorra and taking home maximum points, asserting a clear lead over the rest of the field. I tried to have fun and it was fun to ride, to be here with the friends. Behind the Frenchwoman are Erica Vikander and Katie Anderson. A win here in Austria would make it a third in three events in 2021 and deliver Marian Hertie her fourth world title with an event to spare. Marion has proved time and again why she is untouchable in this category. And this line was yet another example of the riding skill that has made her so dominant. Zero hesitation in one of the steepest areas on the Wildsee loader. She blasted through this pinch and was able to exit at speed. You'd be forgiven for thinking that in Marion's position, she could sit back and rest on her laurels. In fact, this line was quite the opposite. A hair-raising run where she kept her foot flat to the floor all the way down. Even as the snow started to deteriorate down here, she kept good style and good control. It was a huge risk in some very, very dangerous snow, but Marion kept it redlined. And when she arrived in the finish corral, it was clear that Marion had set a target that would be asking the rest of the field to step a long, long way out of their comfort zone if they hoped to better her. My run was uh, about to go fast and steep. The snow was really weird this year, but I managed uh, the couloirs. I, I made two different couloirs, it was super fun. I think I can be better on my, on my run, but today was sketchy. The judges are offering up 73 points flat for Marion's run. Not insurmountable, but in these conditions, a very, very big challenge. The 2018 world champion Manuela Mandler has been recovering from a niggling ankle injury this season, so is trying to temper her ambitions. She'd failed in the second event and went for a big technical drop and went down hard, but she's done well to get back for this event. She was never going to miss the chance to compete on home snow, though. And she knows this face so well. Opting for the same start as Marion, she charged into that same very, very steep area of the face and set about the same couloir. Unlike Marion, though, she pointed it over the rocks here and found herself on a heel edge heading towards that rock wall. Somehow, she was able to control it. But it broke up the flow of what was shaping up to be a very, very strong line. Tracking to the left into fresh snow, she found another drop that fed her onto the apron. Nerves built for Marion Hayati in the finish area. If any of the other ladies, which is behind me, um, is better than me right now, then I do not make the cut to Derby. So it was super tight and that's why I also it was such a mentally hard run because I knew I had to stay on my feet regardless. A solid performance, very strong up top, which as she said when she arrived, she stayed on her feet, which was the maximum she could do. It was to be a nervous wait. Marion Hayati was still in the hot seat. Winning today would mean not just the overall title, but also writing history by being the first person ever to win the Freeride World Tour four times. But even the experienced Erika Vikander couldn't stop the French force measure from taking it all. <laughs> she deserves a fourth world title. She kicked all her asses all year, so. <laughs> so Erika Vikander takes third spot. Manuela Mandel did hold on to second place, but looking at the scores, it's clear. Marion Hayati is in a league of her own. I'm really happy, it's crazy. You know, I'm not the best person to be confident about myself. And to have another world title, it's just so nice, so good. Happy. Marion Hayati is unstoppable and takes the overall win with an event to spare. But Vikander and Anderson are tied on points, so that fight will go down to the wire. A well-deserved moment of celebration for Marion Hayati, who makes it an unprecedented 
four world titles. That was unbelievable. Woo! Alexander Stuff, man. You know, Victor going for the channel gap. This is a really strong run. Going for a massive backflip. 